Hello and welcome everyone, Lanhart here with part one of my Tomb King Setra Let's Play to the Warhammer 2. Big thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access to start this Let's Play early. Uh, I have had a poll up for the last few weeks and it came down to the wire between Setra and Arkham the Black. Uh, but Setra has won by 30 votes. Uh, fear not though, those of you that want to see some of the other Tomb Kings in action, I am in the early stages of planning a co-op, possibly a head-to-head, -head, and for that I will be playing as Tomb Kings and I will be looking to do a, uh, or rather play as either Kartep or Kalida, uh, possibly even Arkan. So I definitely will represent some of the other Tomb Kings in a future campaign at a later date. So fear not with that. But for now, yes, part one of the Setra, the Imperishable campaign begins. Uh, this series will uh, be released every Monday, Wednesday and Friday going forward. Although over the next few days you may find a couple of extra episodes over the weekend as we've just started this campaign. If you do want to leave custom unit name suggestions, please do so via the link in the description to the QT. I've been using QT for a while now for my various Let's Plays and unit name suggestions and it's worked wonders. Basically, when you leave a unit name suggestion, for instance, a skeleton spear unit, so you want to call them the bone spears or whatever, uh, you type that in the box, bone spears, skeletal spearmen, and then tag them as a melee infantry unit basically just means that when I'm searching for unit names later on in the campaign I can just filter by the unit tags such as melee infantry, missile infantry, constructs, monsters, cavalry, things like that and it just makes the whole thing so much easier. So yeah, unit name suggestions, use that QT, that is the place I'll be taking them from. Feel free to leave suggestions for heroes as well. We will of course have a Tim in this series so I look forward to that. And finally before we get take a look at the faction effects and traits uh, as I do with all my new Let's Plays here on the channel, I will be offering you guys the opportunity for an early hour special at part 5. This episode will be an hour special, and I do hour specials every 10 episodes. But for a new series, if you can hit 2,000 likes on this episode, part 1, 2, 3, and 4, then part 5, instead of just being a regular 30 to 40 minute episode, will be an hour long. It is completely optional though, so feel free to leave a like if you would like that early hour special. Uh, if you don't know, that's totally fine. If you're not enjoying the content, feel free to leave a dislike. Anyway, let's go through the faction effects. Obviously, playing etc. we will be playing as Kemri, or I've heard it pronounced as Chemri, or even some of you uh, typing on my previous videos, commenting on there, saying it's Comri. So feel free to correct me on which one of those it is. I believe Setra, when you click on him, he says Chemri. Um, so is that right? Is, is that wrong? <laughs> but anyway, the faction effects are plus two public order, plus ten growth, uh, we get minus uh, one turn construction time for province capital settlements. Uh, Cetra's effects though are plus 100% to his leadership aura size and plus 10% casualty replenishment rate for tomb guard and skeleton chariot units in the Lord's army. Cetra starts off with the tomb guard halberd unit and a Chemrian war sphinx or a Chemrian war sphinx however you want to pronounce it. So we have the mortuary cult, dynasties and realm of souls as our race specific attributes. We're going to be playing on very hard difficulty and I think that's all I need to say. So without further ado, let's start the campaign. The sands of time ravage all. Mortals. Monuments. Even civilizations cannot stand against it. Their remnants lost beneath the dunes, awaiting discovery by the brave or truly. Like time itself, the living are not welcome in Nehekara. For this is the land of the dead, ruled by the tomb kings where only the expired may serve. 
In life, they were tyrants. Now, cursed with undeath. They crave power more than any living thing. And none more so than Cetra, the Imperishable. Eternity was promised, but the Tomb Kings awoke to unlife, no longer beatific sovereigns. Their kingdoms as decayed as their bodies. The glory of Kemri lost, forgotten. Black Pyramid stirs, but does not wake. A vessel of untold power, awaiting a new master. But it remains sealed. The Lich Priests are tasked with finding access. They venture deep into the catacombs, seeking clues. Discovering an obelisk inscribed with hieroglyphs as old as the desert gods. The answer lies in the Nine Books of Nagash, the original tomes of undead lore, authored by the arch-necromancer. Due to the turbulence of the vortex across the ocean, not nine, but only five books are needed. Then, the pyramid shall open. Time has seen the books lost, scattered. Other tomb kings will seek them, for all desire the Black Pyramid. Begin the search. Raise your warriors. The legions of Khemri march to war. Tetra does not serve, he rules. So, how they play. The Books of Nagash, uh, within the Black Pyramid, a great power lies dormant, waiting to be unlocked by the bearer of the Nine Books of Nagash. Collect the Books of Nagash and win the Battle for the Black Pyramid to achieve this campaign victory conditions. Day of Awakening, Tomb King factions can recruit units into their armies without the need to pay for their recruitment or upkeep. 
Instead, each unit has a limited initial recruitment capacity, which can be increased by constructing additional buildings and dynasties. Tomb King factions must delve into their past secrets to increase the number of armies or heroes they can field, or to enlist the aid of mighty lords from ancient dynasties. Mortuary Cult, Tomb King can spend their canopic jars within the Mortuary Cult, where Lich Priests combine them with trade resources to craft magical items or awaken legions of legend, mighty warriors who can be recruited to battle, which are essentially turbocharged uh, regiments of renown, from what I understand. So, mission issued. Books of Nagash, collect uh, any of the nine books of Nagash. We'll get 3,000 to our treasury and 25 canopic jars. Okay, so Greenskins, you've clearly pissed off Setra. So capture and occupy a settlement belonging to the following faction, the Top Knots. And the Salt Plain is to our north. We'll take a look at that properly in a moment. 1,000 treasury plus 15 canopic jars. Uh, we also research dynasty technology and we'll get 1,000 to our treasury. So yeah, we have a very small income, but that's primarily because our only major cost is building new buildings. Uh, we have a landmark building here at... Uh, Hemri or Hemri, however you want to pronounce it. Setra has been pronouncing it, pronouncing it as Hemri, and the advisor has been pronouncing it as Kemri. Um, so yeah, feel free to weigh in, guys. How should it be pronounced? Any other pronunciations that I get wrong in this Let's Play, feel free to correct me phonetically down in the comment section. I know that in my preview video, I was saying um, uh, I was pronouncing these guys wrong. They're Nehikara warriors. I think I was calling them Nekara or so something else. Nihikara warriors, anyway. Nihikara warriors. There we go. Let's try and try and pronounce things correctly, anyway. Uh, I'm going to be screwed for three kingdoms. <laughs> Total war. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we've got the Great Pyramid of Setra as a um, legendary building. This actually costs a bit of population surplus as well. It takes 10 turns to build, costs 15k. Uh, generates more canopic jars, public order, public order in adjacent provinces, unique experience for local armies, winds of magic, all armies, and local recruitment capacity plus one. So that that's quite good. I like that. But yeah, there's there's not a lot that will produce us income. We can get a gold mine here. But that's probably for the Tomb Kings more useful because it produces golden idols, um, which we can use in the Mortuary Cult for Legions of Legend, which also has a new dynasty, which allows us to awaken a new army. Um, weapons, all the way down to sort of legendary ones. There, armors, uh, enchanted items, talismans. And arcane items. I would love for this system to be kind of incorporated into some of the other factions. I would feel like definitely miss a, a, an opportunity to add in a similar sort of thing for the dwarves in either like a runic crafting mechanic or something like that. Um, but yeah, that looks absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at our diplomacy first of all. Probably look at our books, the books in Vagash in a minute as well. Because the, the Black Pyramid is right there, but we're going to need a pretty sizable army, I would imagine, to deal with that. And I kind of feel like we want to get rid of our uh, enemies first. Top Knots are obviously to the north, northeast, and then follows them Nagash, which is led by Arkan the Black. Um, over there. I don't know, I know that. Um, um, I don't think Arkan can confederate with Setra, but I wonder if, as Setra, can I confederate with the other Tomb Kings? Because Kalida starts down here, um, and Kartep starts over here. So I wonder if I could kind of go and grab them across the course of the Let's Play. That might be fun, but I don't know if that's possible. Um, Land of the dead. We have another Tomb King, King uh, Nectabo. Um, leading the Numas. Uh, I probably want to just conquer your lands, really, but we, we could get trade with you. This night. The vamps to the south. Um, mainly because I don't want to go after you guys just yet. Uh, they'll take a non-aggression pack. Can I get a trade agreement as well? I was expecting you. But then, I'm not, I'm not at war with them yet, but I really want to put a non-aggression pact in there. If I'm just going to go after them soon, I don't want to. Don't want to start by uh, <laughs> by uh, breaking treaties and becoming unreliable. What of the heat? 
Land of the Dead. Okay, yeah, if we we can actually complete the whole province. Okay, I'm going to leave the diplomacy and... Tr well, if I'm not going to go kill you guys straight away, can we at least get trade with you? Nope, you're not interested in anything. Well, then if I'm not going to go south for a bit, let's do it. Just, I've got to remember to cancel that non-aggression pact. If I'm, uh, and do that. So, yeah, we probably do need to get rid of them to the south. Relatively sharpish. The Black Pyramid. Ooh, that is a stack. And I think they also had an army in there. Right, what do, what do I even want to build? Um, that we need level 2 for. What's our growth like? Okay. Look, look, look at our buildings here. This gives income and campaign map movement range for armies starting their turn in this region. We've also got the Nihikaran uh, Citadel. And the Royal Burial Chamber. And more Canopic Jars. That's growth through there, which probably would be quite useful for the Mortuary House. That obelisk gives us quite a nice bit of public order. It also allows us to recruit carrion. Well, I'm going to go for the Salt Plain. Let's move to our border and we'll grab a couple of extra units over, I think, before we... Well, actually, we've got six. Six to... If they are Savage Orcs, though... Let's, let's grab a couple of extra units and we'll go in next turn. So I'm going to grab another Skeleton Spear, Skeleton Chariot, and I've now hit my unit capacity. Because again, these cost nothing to recruit or upkeep. Which is just going to be really weird to get used to, I think. But it should be fun. We are kind of facing a little bit of public order problems. But I kind of feel like I'd rather go for this growth first. So we can, yeah, move on this. Although that building can be built at the Salt Plain. But extra growth early on, not a bad thing. Let's throw that in for now. Yes, yeah, so we've already got the Skeleton Chariot. We can go up to the Skeleton Archer Chariot and then the Screaming Skull Catapult. That's going to be useful. But yeah, you can see as we upgrade, it increases capacity for units. All the way through for, for everything. So eventually we can field pretty much as many as we want. As long as we've got the settlements... To push them out by. Let's take a look at dynasties before we end the turn. Uh, I feel like this first episode is going to be an hour long just because I always like to take my time, go through it, no need to rush. Um, first time. So we can choose any of these dynasties to start with. Um, and I think it's mainly sort of what which proclamation you want to go for first. Um, so you have proclamations down the bottom, and at the top you have a, a lord which you can add in to your faction. So if we went for the first dynasty, first guy we could get was actually a melee attack when fighting in desert terrain. Charge bonus, ambush success, and range, and the stalk ability for Wakaf um, as the Tomb King Lord. This one's tax rate, ward save, so you're a good sort of administrator. Construction time, unit capacity, Hemrian War Sphinx increase. Shapti, melee attack. Shapti. Um, hmm. Yeah, so there's lots, and then obviously you've got the Regular bits in in between. Uh, sort of for regular upgrades. Um, that is income from trade. Construction for infantry and chariot buildings. I mean, we're going to be doing that soon. And that does give us campaign map movement range. So early on, I kind of feel that's, a, that's a, just a nice one to go for. Uh, every time we re we go for wisdom the first time, that does give us army capacity plus one. But does that actually... This also gives us army capacity plus one. So yeah, we can either get it through awakening more armies or through... Each of the dynasties. But yeah, we're going for that 14 turns though. It's going to take a little while. Right. Uh, I don't think we can recruit. Oh, we can. No, we can't because. Oh, we, we actually don't have. I see. We don't have any uh, capacity for them just yet. Do we have to do that with these? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so actually we probably. probably oh, that, does that give us Necrotex? Yeah, it does. Each of them. Okay, always gives you. The same there. So that increases our hero pool each time the ones at the top. These ones are for units. So first, these first ones are going to give us for Nihikara Warriors. Uh, chariot units. And Warriors and Chariots. Yeah, the first Dynasty stuff sounds pretty good then for Setra starting off. And let's take a look at his skills actually as well. Oh, and actually the Imperishable because it's a scalable trait. So... 
and this is down to how much you have in your treasury. So when he has 50k in his treasury, he gets plus 10% income from raiding um, and plus 5% income from all buildings, local province. At the next level, he ha when he has a treasury of 10,000, uh, 10, sorry, 100,000, he'll get plus 20% from raiding. Uh, plus 10% income from all buildings, local province. And then finally, if he has a treasury of 20,000, uh, then he'll get plus 30% from raiding and plus 15% local province um, or income from buildings, local province. Anyway, he's also got the, the Great King, which is his specific trait there. Um, so yeah, there are <laughs> but ton of skills here. He's also got his uh, Crown of Nihikara quest and the Blessed Bre Blade of, I don't know how to say that, P-T-R-A, Pratar? Or is the P silent? So it's tra. Let me know how to say that one. Because there's a couple of those in here. Um, so he gets Skeletal ske uh, Steed. Kemrian War Sphinx. And Chariot of the Gods. He's got some really nice... Desert Strike looks really cool. Um, Resurrect. Yanimate. Ancient Stone. Still got the good old bits down the bottom here. All is mine. So I think yeah, we're going to be making a fair bit of money from sort of sacking, looting and... Um, raiding territory as well. Uh, he's also got that one income from raiding sand sweep, which I think I may well go for. Although the casualty replenishment rate is also pretty good. Um, I'm not sure I want to sort of waste points with Setra going on Canopic Jar Hoarder, which will give him plus three per turn eventually. So yeah, but obviously first we're going to go for Root Marcher. Anyway, you're recruiting. We've done everything else we need to do. Just take a look at objectives. So for the campaign victory that we're going after, we've got to go and collect five of the books in Vagash. Um, hold the following settlement, the Black Pyramid of Nagash, and uh, win the following battle. I think we should probably be careful not to rush and try and take the Black Pyramid too early and screw ourselves over. Also got the Books of Nagash as well. And as far as I understand it, the actual rewards for each of the books, it, it's randomized each time you start a new campaign. So the first book of Nagash's sort of rewards aren't set in stone, they'll, they'll float around. Um, so the nearest one to us is actually on the Lost Plateau, which is unlocks... Uh, Lich Priest of Shadows and Winter Magic plus 20. Uh, the second book gives us plus 20% uh, income from trade and gives us campaign line of sight over Golden Idols, Marble, and Gemstone. There's also third book. I think that's the one with. I say, just didn't, doesn't Arkan start with one? Um. I thought. This gives you. Regions will be hit by a sandstorm after sacking occupying settlements, immune to sandstorm attrition. And plus 15% casualty replenishment rate after sacking occupying settlements. That actually sounds really cool. So that's over at Vulture Mountain. Um, Conopic Jars per turn, 10 per turn. Research rate plus 10%. That's pretty good. So there's quite a nice collection here in the Southlands. Two over in Lustria at the Awakening. And held by the Black Creek Raiders. Uh, which look pretty good. And then these ones up in Ulthuan. So that one, the fifth book, looks pretty good because of the extra capacity. Plus five to Tomb Guard. Tomb Guard with Halberds, Skeleton Chariots, and Army Capacity. But um, yeah, so which uh, which book should we go for first? I guess we'll just kind of see where we're going in our in our campaign. Anyway, it's in the first turn. Gotta love that uh, insanely fast first end turn time. Okay, so top knots have spawned a lord in. Mission issued: construct a building that permits recruitment of more units. Okay. Well, I will do that once we can upgrade our settlement. Anyway, let's go in and have our first battle with Setra. Of course, going to fight this one because I want to see that War Sphinx in action, as well as obviously Setra. And I'm sure you guys do too. Uh, I don't think we've got any magic users, so let's just gamble anyway. Well, hey. So also worth mentioning that with the Tomb Kings, you have the Realm of Souls, which has three tiers, sort of similar to the Dark Elves. But instead of getting kills, it's about uh, the number of deaths of your own units required. So if we have 500 deaths, we'll get to tier 3. Uh, 300 to tier 2 and 150 for tier 1. And if we get to tier 3, then we'll unlock the Realm of Souls um, Ushabti, which are very powerful um, melee units. <laughs> they look absolutely awesome. Anyway, so let's just take a look at our units here. So we have the Skeletal Swords. Look at that wonderful War Sphinx. And I believe they, st they stand like perfectly still, these Construct units. 
um, when they're not moving because they're essentially statues that have been brought to life. Uh, which is awesome. Here is, of course, the Imperishable himself. Have a little zoom in on that wonderful face. He's happy to see you. There he is. Right. Let's go get rid of those filthy green skins. I definitely need to up my chariot game for this Let's Play. Split my force because it's sort of a choke point type map. Um, I just want to take a look at the tomb guard. Get started. Yeah, you guys look badass. Some of your masks on as well. Noise. Some of your bandages coming out your eyes. Or your eye sockets, rather. Grab all my units and send them forward. War Sphinx into action. It's rather nasty, as you can see by its uh, weapon strength there. And it's also got some archers on its back. So it should have plenty of fun. I'm going to tell one chariot unit to attack and the other one just to run through. You guys attack up there. Setra also has this ability here. Jaff's uh, incantation of Cursed Blaze plus 20% weapon damage and armor piercing damage. Oh, the chariots are already through. Lots and lots of damage. They're breaking. I'm just going to leave them fighting. Probably shouldn't, actually. Oh, they've broken. Noise. They set their archers on me, so let's pull these guys round over there. What does he also have? He also has... Oh, yes. Wrath of... I don't know how to pronounce this. Petra. Explosion does not cause... Uh, does not affect friendly troops. Causes moderate magical and fire damage. Large explosion. Can disrupt enemy formation. And the War Sphinx is right in there. Oh, just... Yes. Murder them all. Get in there, lads. Right, you guys go after the archers. You guys pull round. This is Augment, Ally, and Self. Sector has a really cool um, sync kill animation as well. Like that. There we go. seems to do it quite a lot, so I don't know if Creative Assembly have upped how often sync kills occur, or if this is just something for Tomb King units. But when I was testing out the other day, he seemed to be doing it a lot. Anyway, have we absolutely wrecked them? We have! <laughs> Absolutely wreck these guys. The War Sphinx is just having a great time. So yeah, we've barely got into our Realm of Souls because we've barely taken any losses. Oh, he's drained. He's a bit tired. Been running him too much. Chariots causing absolute chaos. Oh yes, chariots. And there's victory. Absolutely smushed them. Love it. 
chariots, 117, 105. War Sphinx, 66. That was, that was pretty much all we needed to do. Loot. And yeah, if you occupy if you occupy or raise, you also get plus 30 canopic jars as well. We of course can occupy because it's part of our starting region, which I want to grab all the territory for, although Your we'll go and grab that soon. Control over new lands, my lord. Further conquest in this province will grant you complete dominion over those that exist there. Good. So yeah, if we control the whole province, then we'll get 2,000 treasury and more canopic jars. And route marcher for you, buddy. So the salt plane actually has a um, open graves, so that allows us to get skeleton archers. Gorgazan, and then they have Galbaraz, which where even is that? Is that just slightly further up here on the map? I'm actually, oh yeah, showing that one there. I'm assuming. Yeah, Galbaraz. Just on the map. Um, so yeah, let's get some archers. We can get four of these guys with the unit capacity indicator at the bottom. Um, yeah, we've got plenty of infantry, so let's go for that. Um, we can actually globally recruit as well. Um, but I think we probably... I don't know if we can move straight on this turn, but we'll see. Just uh, finish off the top knots nice and quickly. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to sell ourselves with. They're building themselves up already. I yeah, I'm not gonna bother making any treats with them. I think we're just gonna take them out, sort of quite quite soon, uh, after we dealt with the with the green skins, unless something else pops up uh, in between now and then. So let's just end the turn again. Put it on fast forward for what it's worth, but still, end turn times are pretty darn fast. I'm running this on an M.2 drive as well, I should say. So basically, running it as fast as possible. Um, right now, I'm not even sure if, to be fair, the game can actually benefit from M.2s. I know, obviously, it definitely benefits from um, SSDs. But an M.2 is like an SSD turbocharged in terms of speed, anyway. Right, yeah, let's go straight for Gorgazan. It's not part of our initial province. Ah, uh, no, we can't grab it. Okay, so I might as well grab some more units for the turn. Um, uh, actually... One more of you guys, another spear unit, and I'm going to go for another archer. How, how powerful are my archers? 140 range. Yeah, they're alright. Not amazing, but they'll do. Oh, they're very weak there. We can probably just all resolve that. Uh, Galbaraz, though, will be a siege for us. They're definitely going to want all of our troops for that. We are relatively unhappy over here, so there's a likelihood that there will be a rebellion. But I'm kind of thinking that, actually, Rebellion, not the worst thing, because one, it'll give us some extra experience and skill points for Cetra, but also it'll give us some post-battle loot, which we can then throw into upgrading buildings. Oh, they're moving an army in. Oh, I can take that, no worries. Ah, another army. Scafag. Toof taker. Um, I savage orcs. They are pretty tough. Mm. I want to try and sandfight because I want to get Ushabti, but I don't want to risk losing my unit, especially like my extra starting units of the War Sphinx and the Tomb Guard. Without, I want to withdraw and see if I can pull them back. I know that means I'm not going to get my extra. Oh, he's come on in. Oh, and he's forced march to work. Oh, he's gone to the settlement. Okay. That one's gone away, though. I think, yeah, we need to maybe pull back and build up. Maybe I pushed up too far. Because obviously now we lose that that uh, turn's worth of recruitment. For our units, which is a shame. I'm going to go near my settlement so that I can actually reach that in one turn. But we'll still get the garrison. And then I'm going to recruit under the safety of... Uh, here. I'm gonna go for... I'm gonna go for some more spear. Um, no. Another skeleton warrior. And then we'll go for them next turn. Well, actually, now, 
Now we've got to take into account the garrison, so we still might need a few more units. Yeah, I don't really want an army wipe. Oh, they've come to meet me. So they're still interrupting me, but this time they're not being supported. Yep, yeah, we'll fight that. Top knots be aggressive. The, the boar boys are going to be nasty, but they're coming to me as well, so I can, can't take up a defensive formation. We've got the chariots. We do have the semi-weak garrison. Love these desert maps. Let's pop the uh, skeleton archer that in front, because these guys don't have any, any armor, so we should be able to whittle them down rather nicely. And I'm going to put halberds on that side, spears on this side, because they've got they've got cavalry. Chariots over there, war sphinx over here, and Cetra here. Obviously, um... At each Realm of Souls tier, you also get replenishment of hit points of your combatants, and it heals injured units before resurrecting as well. That's worth noting. Yeah, so they've got some guys over here. Get these archers there. I'm going to pop all the extra infantry on this side. Chariots, I'm going to roll you all the way over there early on. These guys actually probably will take an absolute age to get here. War Sphinx, go have some fun. War Sphinx having a great time. Ash going to pull that spear unit over. Early. Send you two into that unit here. Go forth, Cetra. What's my War Sphinx doing? Oh no! They've gotten away. Fine, Tomb Guard. Oh, and we've hit the first Realm of Souls tier. I wonder if we'll lose enough to get Ushabti, because they're just awesome. I love how we grab this kill animation. It's just awesome. Just tosses them aside casually. Oh, Charis is getting you out of there. Archers, you just want to take them out. They're running right along you there. Yes, yes explosion. Oh, nice. Just wrecked them with the chariot. You guys pull back because they'll likely return. Is it power setter up? Nice, absolutely right, these guys. Let's head on down to help out the halberds. We're going to get enough for the Abshabti to appear. It's getting very close. We might just be able to just summon them as uh, all of their units break. All their lords about to die. Get him, buddy. Archers, no. Damn it. 
Oh, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get enough kills. Just. Surely. Eight more eight more skeletons die. No! <laughs> oh, so close. Uh, I do want to chase these guys down, though. Because it means less of them about. Oh, it was so close. Seven more, and we've got Ushabti. So close. Oh, they're right near the white line, so I'm not going to get them. Come on, Chariots. You're my, my clean-up crew. Hopefully, we can get them out. If not this episode, but uh, next episode for sure. I reckon in the siege, we probably will, actually. Decisive victory. A bit of loot. So, we have three options. Uh, endless March. What? Oh, I did not realize that. Your army will gain the following effects. Two turns plus 20% campaign map movement range. Nice. And we get some treasury. Or harvest organs for plus 30 canopic jars straight away. Or we can go for bind souls, which for three turns will give us plus 8% casualty replenishment rate. That's really quite nice. We do need to replenish if we want to keep on pushing against them. Because we've been slowed down a bit. God, I can't, yeah, I'm going to take the bind souls for now. Damn, that that's nice. He's running away. If I go after him now, I'll have to face all their armies. Yeah, he's just within range to draw... The garrison out as well. So. I need to replenish up. Uh, and now it's like. What are we going to pop the point into? This gives bonus versus large. Restless dead. This is spells here. Physical resistance. Oh that upgrades it. I think. Oh no sorry that's. This. Um. Um, Petra's incantation of righteous smiting. Surely that replaces. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It un available after unlocking it. Right, so we've got to unlock that first. Damn, that is really, really nice. Skull Storm. I also do want to make him a bit of a bit of a nasty fighter as well because his tomb strike looks good. Um, but yeah, some of these bonuses and buffs here look pretty sharp. So, gonna go grab that for now. And I'll upgrade the capital first. And one more spear unit and I think just more infantry now. Just to build up to take out these green skins. Oh, they are. They do not hang about, do they? AI is way more aggressive in this. Okay, well, we're definitely going to fight. That first army, we should be able to absolutely rip it apart. Now we should get Ushabti. <laughs> and we can defend in the sort of causeway, the choke points of the salt plane here. Okay. Oh. One's in front and one's be reinforcements are behind. Okay. Gambling, it doesn't really matter what the outcome is. That's that's interesting. Okay. Um, right, I'm going to pop the chariots then over on this side. I'm probably not going to push them up too early because, yeah, they do have some cavalry still. Defend this section with my spears and tomb guard. And then have you guys facing the other way. The 
the reinforcements. That's my plan. Give us Ushabti this time, though. Come on. Oh, how many of them they actually got? 900 right now, but more of them are piling on in. 1,000. 1,400. Oh, 1,500. 1,700. Oh, they're shifting. Your cheeky sods. Okay, they complete... Oh, no, wait, that's... That'll be their total amount. I think... Mm, we'll take into account how many are wounded. To be fair, these chariots, if they come in one by one, we should just be able to slaughter them there. Might move the Sphinx over. The War Sphinx. Looks like that army's just going to pin and wait for us to head on. Head on to them. Take our time, use our archers. I would take out theirs, but I don't think we'd be able to do much damage. I'd rather take out their infantry, because they just have no armor. Okay, I'm going to do a charge forward with my chariots, and then pull them straight back. Where's that? Oh, the cavalry still behind. is behind their war boss. Oh, the slaughter. But that's drawing their cavalry over. Get out of there, chariots. Okay, they've, they've managed to get out. Keep hitting them. But they're not coming back, so let's use the chariots to take out those archers at the back here. Same with the War Sphinx. Nice! Punch these guys in from the flanks. And chariots go. Okay, archers pull back. Quick, 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 quick. goes first here yes what the hell was that oh crap where'd these guys come from That's the second tier, though. Chariots, get back. Oh, we're definitely going to get Ushabti. Boom. Yeah, nearly get enough for Ushabti. Come on, War Sphinx, break them. Oh, they're in mass route. Okay, I've, I've got enough to summon them. Quick, 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 quick. Um, because they're all breaking. These guys haven't broken yet. <laughs> Here they are. Oh, they've rallied.
get some slow-mo in here of the Ashabti because they... I just love the way that they sort of pull their blades back and then swing them and sometimes they combine their blades together like a staff, a polearm sort of weapon. It's just beautiful. So, so cool. Ah, down they go. So yeah, we summon them in. They're carving people up, taking names. Definitely want to charge down as many as we can here. Just generally wreck some faces. Can't wait till we can actually just recruit these guys normally because they're wonderful. They're the troll or crypt horror or croxigor unit for the for the Tomb Kings, and they're. An absolute delight. <laughs> just love that you can summon a unit in as well. It's just sick. Okay, we'll triple speed it. As we go on through. Noise. I think that's most of them. I don't think we're going to catch any more of them. Let's end the battle. Close victory. Yeah, it was. We lost We lost a unit of uh, skeleton swordsmen. Skeleton warriors, whatever they're called. Chariots getting loads of kills. Noise. Yeah, we lost these guys. But that's okay. Cetra getting 117 kills. Nice, 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 nice. Um, does that bind souls? Is it just... I imagine it refreshes rather than stacks, because otherwise that's ridiculous. 5% um, really isn't much replenishment. So I'm kind of... I'm going to take the Endless March for the... I say that. We're probably not going to use it in the two turns, but... Let's grab it for now. Oh, a choice of servants. Call upon the Tomb Prince, uh, the Necrotect. Uh, accept a gift instead, or a Lich Priest. Um, so, master, uh, Necrotects are masters of stone and construction. They improve the Construct's unit's performance in battle, while also granting greater mobility and improved incoming campaign. Tomb Princes... Uh, protect their kings, also being battlefield units who experience increasing public order, and Lich Priests are our spellcasters. I'm going to go for the Necrotect, I think. So that gives us plus one for them and recruits one for us. The ultimate shrine. Now we've got to successfully carry out an agent action. Because we've gained you over here. Will you be our... Oh, well, I guess... I mean, you could be our Tim for the series. But Tim would probably be the uh, the Lich Priest. And I think I think I saw one suggestion already on the QT that was like Tim Timotet. <laughs> Did quite like that. Yeah, so we'll probably wait until we get a Lich Priest. So do 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 casual replenishment for all construct units. Restore replenishes them. Stone Shaper. Wrath of Cre of the Creator. Noise. Oh, so those are buffs for for them. Cool. It's also relatively powerful in melee. Get Tomb Strike. But you also increase unit capacity for all of these um, construct units, which is pretty cool. Master Builder, which reduces such a cost for all buildings. Oh, that's nice. Get immortality, obviously. You get a Skeleton Chariot. You can get boost income, increase mobility, which, yeah, definitely good to have. And we can definitely pop into... Canopic Jar hold, uh, Hoarder for you. So, let's go. Can I do anything to... Oh, we can block... Oh, we can attempt to block him. We can't run away. 
I'm definitely going to sally out though and finish you off. I'm assuming that other army just got completely wiped out. Probably because it was in, maybe it was in Force March. Well, they've built up a full stack already. King uh, Nectane Bow. Um, okay, as much as I want to pop you in this army, that would probably reduce my movement range. So let's just see if we can catch them with Setra. So yeah, I'm going to go for this one of Righteous Smiting, because uh, armor piercing damage plus 40%. Oh, that's weapon. Oh, is that that's different actually, isn't it? Arm piercing. Oh, that's missile damage as well. Okay, I don't really want that. Fair enough. What's this? Direct damage. Mm -mm -mm. The restless dead. Resurrects dead combatants. That's passive. It's probably quite nice to have. But we can already get ancient tyrant. Physical resistance and charge bonus. Public order minus four and sacking settlements plus 15. I'm not going to go after sacking any settlements just yet. I wouldn't have thought. Um, causes damage to combatants. Weak versus single, so it's good against multiple. Okay, well, let's go for that. Nice quick quarter resolve. Um, I'm going to endless march it as well. Well, Gazan, I think we can probably move up to and wipe them out as well. Yes, we can. Physical resistance. I'm going to go for Restless Dead passive now. So let's move you up because we'll pop you into the army, but not till next turn. My mummy friend. Boom. Archers, oh my god, 201 kills. Absolutely wrecking the green skins. And yeah, occupy for now. Right unlock, the great incantation of Kashar. Oh yeah, I didn't actually look at rights yet. What are our rights? We can get. Uh, a Necrotect, which a unique Necrotect capable of colonizing ruins at level 3. That's quite nice. Oh, we've got to perform an action with Necrotect Hero and then we'll unlock that. That'd be actually good for then just claiming this settlement at tier 3 straight away. Uh, we also get Casket of Souls. Light of Death, Armor Piercing Missiles, Magical Artillery. Oh, 860. Damn. Uh, we can currently go for Great Incantation of Kashar, which is all regions belonging to you will be hit by Sandstorm causing attrition to foreign uh, any foreign armies. Immune Sandstorm attrition, Amber Chance plus 50%, and Sand Veil all armies. Ooh, of course we can like make them hidden as we go. I don't think we need to use that right now, um, but definitely soon. I think maybe if we get attacked by these guys, because I'm pretty sure they're gearing up for war. Yeah, it's slowly deteriorating. Um, they've got a full stack. So it's going to come down to my stack versus their stack. Dabraz, I'm hoping, doesn't have an army in it. We can recruit more troops. I am going to spam out warriors, I think. For now. And Cetra's gained another level. Physical resistance. Oh, I'm pissing missile. I mean, to be fair, augment on self or ally. Yeah, let's go for my missile troops because we can just blast that. Oh, we've already unlocked the crown of uh, Nihikara. Um, so that gives us plus three armor, physical resistance, chance of intercepting, plus the augment, which is plus 10% arm piercing, weapon damage, and charge bonus. So we've started that quest. I assume that will trigger next turn. Um, right. Let's end turn. They're just going back and forth down here. A king must have his crown, my lord. Yours was a repository of such power, and a true reflection of your achievements in life and beyond. 
Perhaps it is time to don it once more. Okay. So we've got to construct a grave port. Which we'll be able to nicely do when we take that settlement. Good. It is within canopic jars that the remains of the dead are preserved, and to which their souls are eternally bound. Have at least 250. Seek out more such artifacts for the essences they provide. The enemy recoils before your legions, great king. End these pests once and Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got the great incant incantation of Tahoth. Classic souls will become available for equipment into my army. Um, yeah, I don't see... Oh, that will cost us 5k. But if I can... Will it allow me to just grab it through here? Yeah, Casket of Souls. We can just throw it straight into his force. Oh, no, we're full 20 out of 20. Okay, well, we could merge some guys. Casket of Souls for the siege. Sounds good. Perform right. Probably need that money, but still. Casket of Souls. And we can reach Galbaraz this turn. Don't think I can if I put the Necrotech. Oh, we can. So we can get rid of another unit. We can go straight in because we've got this and this, which is what we will do. But first, let me grab my Necrotect and bring you in as well. I'll set the slaves to work. Yeah, we've now unlocked that one. We'll have to wait five turns though before we can pop it. Go in and let's fight it. That casket of souls. And then, once we fought, uh, finish this, I think we'll have a, a nice place to end this first episode. Oh, un underground. Oh, of course, yeah, dwarven settlement, technically. Casket of souls. That's much smaller than I thought. Oh, wow. Quite literally, <laughs> quite literally, uh, a casket <laughs> on some souls and some bones and some scarab bugs, I think. Wow. Okay. 860 missile damage. That is surely rather disgusting. We'll fire it at the gate as we just push forward with everything. Send the Sphinx in. I'm not sure if I want to send these guys up the walls because I'm not sure if they'll be that successful. But I think, I think we will. I think we'll keep the spears down on the ground. Take a look at the Necrotect, actually. Noise. Yeah, what are you, what's your construct? Oh, no, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. Whip infantry. <laughs> Encourage. I think he just gives a leadership buff at the moment to the construct units. Totally forgot to group up my archers. Casket of Souls. Hit that gate. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's artillery. They mainly pop, pop their archers up on the walls. So that's good. We just need to blast on through. I'm thinking with you guys, I'm going to go attack that gatehouse. And then flank on around over there. That's insane, though.
Oh, it opens. Nice. It opens to blast out the damage. That's fun. Tear them down, boys. How are we doing against the gates over here? Pretty slow. May not make it in time. Zip, zap, zop. I mean, it's doing on the walls. I'm starting to break them. Oh, nice. Look at that. Dragging them down to their deaths. Take second a bit of a pounding. Made it through yet? Nope. Those magic missiles. Yep. Boom. Victory. In the battle, don't you chase him down? This is a victory for the Doom Kings. Lost 200. They're all dead. They lost 203, but same thing. They're definitely gone. Yeah, it's gonna occupy suitable terrain, so we might as well. Uh, we're going to K because we've yet got the whole province. The artisans of the mortuary cult stand ready to assist your cause, my lord. Employ them to craft powerful artifacts that may aid you in your conquests. Okay, so we can clearly construct something. It's a shame this doesn't change on the map to like pyramids. And what have you. I don't think we'd leave it with all the... But so we defeated the top knots. Nice. So we can go for the final incantation that we've got here. We can go for inv uh, evasion. And we can go through these next ones. So yeah, the sandstorm. The skull storm rather is going to be noise. And then we'll go through your... Uh, I think we'll make you a fighter after that. Right, so we can issue a command. What sort of commandments have we got? We have worship of uh, Fakath. <laughs> Construction cost minus 10%. All buildings tax rate plus 5%. Worship of uh, Jaff, which is plus 1 for all unit recruits. Casualty replenishment rate. Uh, worship of Kashar, uh, plus 5 melee defense. Amber success chance plus 15. Worship of Asaf, plus 5 public order. Plus two untainted and uh, worship of Patra, which is plus 10% uh, campaign map movement range for armies starting their turn in this province and lots of growth. Um, growth is good, but I'm thinking public order so we can actually maybe move out from here relatively soon. We'll just keep this army, I think, as is and probably look to attack those guys sooner rather than later in. Five turns, we could grab the Necrotect here and then 
grab this settlement here because it's ruins. And also, yeah, we can upgrade. So more growth is good. We can actually... Oh, no, we can't put that in yet. We need tier three. Gold mine, though, definitely. We can also go for some cavalry. Get some skeleton swords. Um, yeah. Uh, skeleton horsemen, not swordsmen. And we can't get any of the other troops. Shabti until tier three or higher. Could go for some of these other bits and pieces. Public order, perhaps. Um, actually, yeah, which one's my garrison building? Is it through here for Kemri? Yes, it looks like it is. But I imagine for Gorgazan, they've got a desert lookout. Yeah, there we go. And Tower of Bone. So it's only you don't get a tier. Oh, sorry, that's Gorgazan. Sorry. Skeletal garrison, sandstone, sandstone walls, and engraved walls. Okay, that does our defense up to tier four. Cool. Um, yeah, so final building. Hmm. Final building. We could leave for now, or we could go for one of the... Uh, probably pu public order, actually, to settle things a bit. Because I don't think we're going to have to worry about rebellions now. But yeah, let me know in the comment section. And finally, here, what can we awaken? We can awaken the flock of the Jaff Carrions, if we want to. Um, I'll check, actually, if there's a mission to awaken something. Because, um, yeah, you awaken them, and then you can... Then you can summon them through the Regiment Rat on and Legion of Legend. I assume they'll have a cooldown if I lose them. Um, yeah, I guess it'd be good. Flyers, fast, armor piercing as well, death from above. So yeah, we'll grab them at the start of the next episode. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed part one, guys. I'll try and get another episode out uh, over the weekend for you all, but there'll definitely be one out on Monday. And then, as I said, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays will be the regular upload of this Tomb King series going forward. Also, I believe... Um, Games Planet still have their 20% off discount for the Tomb Kings if you haven't already grabbed that. Uh, it is, uh, unfortunately, region locked just to Europe, I believe. Um, but all you need to do is get the link in the description and put in Tomb 20 at the checkout in the coupon section. And it will save you 20% um, off the cost of the DLC if you haven't already grabbed it. Anyway, until the next one, I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take pride in the Legion, check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet, Overclockers UK, QT, and MSI. Till the next one, ciao for now.